Alright everybody, everybody, welcome back to the ES Prime Dota 2 Cup. It's time for our semi-finals. It's the best of three action hours again to the semi-finals. It's going to be Team Evil Geniuses up against Team Stay Free, who we saw earlier, both these two teams. We'll take a quick look at our brackets to let you know what we're actually getting into here. As uh, EG taking on Stay Free, our first semi-final. Then tomorrow we're going to have our other semi-final, which is going to be Fnatic taking on Team Speed Gaming, who earlier dismantled the super strong dinosaurs. But we're going to hop out. Hop ourselves into our game between Evil Geniuses and Safri. It's game number one. Joining me, of course, is Vikramon. How are you doing, Vic? I'm doing great, gods. Refresh yeah. myself on the tea. Uh, pretty excited for the series, honestly. One one team that's up and coming, one team that's very well known. Not going to be easy for Safri to beat EG. I know they did struggle with Dignitas a little bit in MLG, and EG is definitely at Dignitas's level, if not higher, but it's not hopeless. I guess we're already pretty deep into the draft, so let's talk about it a little bit. Yeah, um, no big surprises with the bans. You do see the Elder Titan, which you mentioned, is probably like your top, top pick getting banned out. We do see an OD, so uh, that's, I guess, the big thing here. Stay free, first pick an OD. EG immediately respond with the Razor Naga, though. Yeah, I, I actually am somewhat surprised that they chose to pick OD uh, in that first slot, knowing that there was an available Razor. Razor actually has uh, over 60% professional win rate against OD. I think it's 64% or so. So it's kind of an uphill battle, and you usually don't pick OD to go into an uphill battle. You pick OD because it's a guaranteed lane win. Uh, usually the tactic I've been seeing teams do now when they want OD, when they have first pick, is to let it go to fourth. Because fourth is like the perfect time to pick OD. You could just pick him and immediately ban Razor afterwards. And maybe even ban a second hero, like Lone Druid or Kunkka or something. Okay. Here they choose to go first, and I actually like EG's draft a little more here. Oh yeah, I, I really like what EG have done here. They go back for that. Uh, looks like a probably a one position life sealer, most likely played by Jo. But they've got themselves a dual core lineup already. They can throw in an offlaner, offlaner with a bit of oomph as well. There's a, probably still a couple different offlane options for Universe. His Dark Seer has been banned out. I imagine, well, his Clockwork's already been taken by Stay Free, but I imagine they're not too worried about what they can pick him. And if they if they really want, they put him on the the life sealer in an offlane position, maybe in the trial lane and get just Jo some kind of a favorable one v one lane for himself in the safe lane. Yeah, Universe is a pretty good life stealer player. Uh, it's not, I think, his best hero, but it's he's, it's quite good. They could absolutely with Naga Crystal Maiden life stealer run an aggressive trial lane. Uh, Naga can initiate from an appreciable distance with the uh, ensnare, and they just follow up. At that point, it's easy. Frostbite, Crystal Nova, Open Wounds, you have a wealth of tools to follow that kill up. I'm, I was going to say, I think Stay Free would probably ban the Nature's Prophet, because the, the safest choice, the one that I was expecting, if it wasn't banned, was to have Universe on that Nature's Prophet, his best performing hero at TI3, and then just have a solid triple core lineup. Instead, EG is going to have to go a little more off the beaten path. With the Nature's Prophet banned, I do think it'll probably be the aggressive trial and a solo safe. And of course, that gives them uh, you know, a wealth of options for that lane. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I, I don't. I guess you could maybe go for that like Navi style when you're in an off lane where you just straight up kill the ancients uh, if you, you want to chop do... down those trees. But I don't think it's something I've seen EG use as of yet. And they they actually, um, if Stay Free tries to dodge the Razor and EG suss it out, they can also just send Razor so we'll safe run whatever the hell they want mid. Ah, this oh. is so smart. Now there's no favorable OD matchup. Period. Yes. OD is, uh, is Lone Druid, Razor, whatever he's up against is not going to be fun. I think you just have to kind of set him, send him mid and hope for the best as far as that matchup's concerned. But stay free, go for what looks to be a Cory Alchemist as their main carry. I, I say that, I'm looking around. This is actually maybe an Alchemist support. Cory picks up the OD even. And PPD Alchemist. So Alchemist going to be a support and the Mirana goes into, well, I guess a farming role. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, uh, this is an NEL tactic. This is actually a PPD tactic. Uh, he frequently drafts specifically the support alchemist. Okay. It is a pure snowball uh, support, basically. Yeah. You want to just get kills. You want to rack up kills. He actually robes a lot with this hero. Uh, so if you can get a bunch of kills early, you do well, because you, can, you have two options at that point. You can actually transition into a late, late period semi-carry, or you can just go things like blink medallion and just have very yeah. good uh, initiate capability. It can peter out, though, especially if you don't get the early kills. Okay. I do apologize for those of you in Dota TV. You can now hear me again. I uh, I logged into a different account to actually host this game, because I wasn't hosting the last lobby. But my Dota TV audio is back on, so we should be good to go. As uh, We'll introduce our two teams. This is our, our first of two semifinals, as mentioned. We've got Evil Geniuses playing over on the Radiant side. Mojo Stormstart, MSS, going to be playing the Solomid Razor, it looks like. Jo 
handling the life steal at universe on a off lane lone druid most likely or possibly even safe lane solo fogged on the support crystal main and then fear can be handling the naga siren yep looking up towards stay free certainly the underdogs in this matchup but uh, a team that's very promising i think we'll see more of them and i mean oh yeah we won't see them unfortunately in two days at full sale but hopefully at future events uh it's gonna be uh where should we start let's start with cory on the od he's usually their hard carry player so we'll have to see where they actually end up landing this outworld devourer actually with this selection I, i'm suddenly really confused because they could do a lot of different things yeah. they could i don't know about mirana mid in general but it is certainly an option that they could try at any rate in some lane will be a mirana she's going to be played by enzo Cory on the Outworld Devourer, Tralf on the Lashrak, Zai on the Clockwork. We saw him play Clockwork quite well in their previous game against uh, Four Sweet Revenge. And uh, Peter Pandam, PPD, will be on the Support Alchemist. Okay. Well, uh, this, like you say, like, it's hard to really predict exactly what state you are planning with these lanes. Mostly, I mean, typically you'd just be looking, saying, okay, your OD goes mid, your Clockwork goes off lane, then you're trialing to the safe lane with your Marana, Lashrak, Alchemist, but... That triple stun could easily go offensive trial, and if they want to try and take it to EG, problem is, Lone Druid wins 1v1 matchups. It's not easy or yeah. really favorable to put Lone Druid, like, to put any of these heroes 1v1 against Lone Druid. OD doesn't do too well against Lone Druid, and then heroes like Clockwork will struggle 1v1 against Lone Druid as well, so I don't think we look towards that here by our stay free. Yeah, I, I I don't think so. We mentioned we might see just some swaps around. I, I really like the draft EG came out with here. I, I think on the balance of drafts, they have the far stronger in a sort of even game. Now, Stay Free can cause chaos. They have a much more chaotic lineup. And I'm going to be, personally, I'm going to be looking to PPD. Because the Alchemist is, I think, if it just doesn't do anything, or he stuns himself a lot with Unstable Concoction, I don't think this lineup has a single tool that can possibly contest EG. Yeah. Right. In, in At any point in the game. I'm definitely liking what EG have done with this draft. The, the late pick on the Lone Druid as well, I think it's something that Stay Free probably weren't expecting to come out. And, well, it could cause them some problems here. So, uh, a bit of a pause coming out. Looks like Stay Free still waiting on Enzo to reconnect to the game. Uh, he's not ready to go, but uh, it's okay. we got uh, Steam, ha Steam having problems, apparently. Yeah, there's Steam is... I'm not even on Steam. I think we're just in the game because we're in the game. But... Ah, so Steam is down, which is unfortunate. Yes, but... Steam is Steam is dead's dead game. Or right. we'll please... I mean, we'll get them, we'll get them back in eventually. Yeah. I don't want to say that Stay Free have no chance with the draft. Like the the flip side is, and I've seen this happen. The is a puppy alchemist I've seen do well. Alex yes. when he played for Mouse had some good support alks. If you just if you land every stun, it's it's insane. Like the stun does so much damage. It stuns for so long. Yeah, they, I think that's the one thing Stay Free. They just have a ton of crowd control with that. The tri lane having three stuns, a clockwork as well, offering multiple. And then OD, well, he's not really got a straight-up stun, but the Astral Imprisonment giving them a, a good team fight. Also a nice spell to have against Lifestealer, uh, when whoever's getting initiated on can just be kept alive using a defensive Astral. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Stay Free have picked up a bunch of powerful heroes. This is also... I haven't seen Lashrak in a while. Um, he's sort of... When people stopped playing Shadow Demon, Lashrak became very unpopular as a result because he was usually picked in, as a pairing with Shadow Demon. But you'd think, considering Rubik is still a thing... Uh, we don't see Lesh much at all. No. Level yeah. dependent, I suppose. That's what I like about this Stay Free team is that they'll pull out these sort of different picks here and there. Like a fourth pick, Leshrek, as a support, saying that's kind of disappeared. They're yeah. going for an Alchemist support. In the past, like even in the MLG North American League, they were picking stuff like Zeus solo mid quite right. a lot. There was no real just like, just follow the metagame kind of plague from these guys. These guys yeah. are like, we'll, we'll just pick what suits us. I mean, they're coming yeah. off from a different game. They're picking to their comfort zone. Yeah, which I, think <laughs> yeah is I was going to say. The right way to do it. Is... Torture is a pretty top tier hero, right? Yeah. Why, would, why wouldn't we pick Torture? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but I assume it's some kind of a... It's the Shrek. Okay. Uh, but, uh, I mean, he's slightly different, but he's close enough. And they do have lots of setup for that Split Earth. I mean, if any time a stable concoction lands that Split Earth, uh, you can time it with Astral Imprisonment. It's not the easiest thing, but you can't, the easiest way is actually to listen for the sound cue to figure out when you actually uh, dump it, but that works. Obviously, oh. Clockwork with a Hookshot or Cog sets up Split Earth, so shouldn't be too hard to land that stun. I think Tralf could definitely do work. And The great thing about Lashrak, and actually the great thing about this lineup in general, is if they want to harness the power of the Pentacore and the game goes long enough, hey, Lashrak's pretty good with farm. Alchemist is good with farm. Marana's good with farm. If this goes like 60 minutes, Stay Free could just 
power through it. I just don't see the road to 60 minutes. Yeah. Well, it seems Steam is uh, still having some problems. Still down. Unfortunately, that means this Dota 2 game will be somewhat delayed. We do apologize to you guys on the stream waiting around, but it's all right. How's your morning been, Vic? Have you been up to much Good morning. <laughs> it's pretty late already. It's, it's uh, I guess afternoon now. 7 p.m. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my day's been really good. I got some work done. I, I managed to sneak back on the train in time for the previous games, the um, the We Play Rocks Alliance, which is a really interesting series, actually. Uh, Alliance in general, having a bit of a tough time, surprisingly, yes. all of a sudden. There's been a ton of Dota 2 today. I mean, there's, that's oh, always yeah. the case with the online tournament, so I feel like today especially. Is... Uh, today and yesterday has been like three simultaneous games running almost the entire day. Yeah, there was... So it's, it's testing my multitask ability. Oh, I need yeah. Google Glass so I can have one in each eye. I mean, you talked about that, like the EG Fnatic series that uh, yep. EG lost to one. Like that was probably one which yep. slipped over a lot of people's heads with like EMS going on, yeah. We Play going on. Those were good games. Yeah. Right. It was at the same time as a really interesting series in EMS and an interesting series in We Play because EMS was flip side came decently close to beating Alliance. Yeah. Also. I saw that. I, I tuned in for like a couple minutes during game three, and I was like, "Wow, yeah. they actually took a game. That was impressive." Yeah. And game three seemed like they were up a couple of kills early on. Yeah. But it's being up a couple kills against Alliance is very yeah. it's a very fleeting advantage. Rock, well, Rock's Kiss had a 10k gold lead as well as like a, a big kill lead, and somehow yeah, Alliance true. still managed to do their thing. They did. It was a couple just missed opportunities. But yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. G Alliance definitely capable of coming back. Yeah. Tongfu capable of coming back as well, if we're going <laughs> to just talk about all the games today. LGD ent up, got more than 10k, I believe. It's then. weird having, like, for, like top tier Dota, like t like the tier one teams playing in Dota games at like six p.m. Like those games yes. start at six p.m. for me. It's like it's always weird when I see the D two live because I'm like, whoa, why are these teams playing at this hour of the day? Right. I think it's great though. It, it's I mean, cool. It's... There's almost like a full twenty four hours of like top tier Dota two content. Absolutely, we're getting there, and I think that's I think that's really remarkable. It's yeah. if this is going to be a game in which most of the live content is tournaments rather than just streams, and that seems to be the way it's going. I guess then, less so now because the D2L doesn't overlap the same days as WPC. Because if it was on the yes. same days, the D2L would go from like 6 p.m. till midnight. And right. then, well, WPC would start, which would go into yeah. the European content. Your European content goes, and then, oh, it's time for D2L again. You have a full 24 hours. But... Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, I think, I, I know that Ace had an issue with just yeah. the, the scheduling, I guess, for the yes. Asian teams. But even so, I mean, having primetime US times with some of the best teams in the world is really great. And I think it expands those teams to a new audience as well, which everybody wants. Everybody wants to tap into that worldwide Dota audience because it is very geographically diverse. Yeah. All right. Well, we do have a, a continued pause here. and uh, It looks it's like different. one of the players is reconnected. Uh, the <laughs> Stay Free player reconnected. So we're just waiting on fear, which seems to suggest that the Steam issues are solved. Dota Hopefully. 2 slash Steam is back up. Uh, I'm I'm back on Steam. I think it's. Okay. I mean, we could check the graph, but it's probably okay. I think we'll get fear back. Yes. All right. He's Video games. I have to stay offline, otherwise people name Sayuri Futa add me on Steam and it pops up and I get in trouble. You can turn that off, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's true. That's true. I I just turn off the overlay completely because yeah. when I had when I was still on my really bad old computer, like even turning on the Steam overlay would just cause it to drop to like five FPS. My problem is then like when I'm just like playing normally and my like, friends are messaging me, like they'll think I'm ignoring them on Steam. Right. Right. So I'm happy just to keep what it What you do time. is you just uh, ignore them all the time so that they become yeah. used to it. That's what I tell people. Like, they say, I'm like, I'm like, if you ever want to talk to me, just message me on Skype, even if I'm online on Steam. Or, like, yeah. I'll be queuing for a game, and they'll be, hey, do you want to party? And I com completely flat ignore them because I don't see their message, and they think I'm actually <laughs> dodging or ignoring them. <laughs> not the Fair case. Enough. All right, so I guess, we're, I guess we're back into the game, and this should be a pretty interesting one. It's... And... It is savory going with like the, the, the players in their regular roles. Enzo is soloing mid, but as a Mirana. Then we have a trialing Outworld Devourer. Interesting yeah. stuff from Safery. I, I think this is an interesting adaptive move from them. Knowing So they picked OD first, right? So you want to get something out of this hero. And they find themselves in a position where they very likely, in either solo lane, would have been facing a, a disfavorable lane for the OD. He doesn't beat... Lone Druid, it's kind of skill-based, but Lone Druid has a slight advantage, I feel, yeah. when both players are at maximum potential. Razor just craps all over him. So they were like, well, we got to get something out of the OD. It's not like you can't run him tri-lane. Mushi used to do it all the time. Uh, my issue is Mirana solo mid. It's really fun to play, but the base damage. Yeah, Mirana, I, I agree. It's fun to play, but it's one of those hard to actually execute mid heroes in the mid lane. He has gone for the Wraith Band pulled regen, so this will help him out a bit with the last hitting. Even gone for the double branches to get all the 
plus damage he can get, an extra eleven base damage as a result uh, from the from the item build. Yeah, I, I mean, I like this Shadow Fiend esque item build here. I think it's definitely the only way to play the Serum mid if you're yeah. going to play it. Uh, still, though, fifty. I mean, it's higher than Razor, but not after Razor has boots. So this Static Link is going to cause Mirana all sorts of problems. Yeah, you would essentially have to actually... leap out of it. Yeah, I think you might level leap really early. Yeah, this is smart. Yeah, I think that's every time leaps up and he's static linked to you, you've got to just use it immediately to get out of there. It's just gonna, right. it's gonna ruin his last inning. Even that minus four damage. Yeah. Well, it's not minus yeah. four. It's actually minus seven. Sorry. Yeah, right. it's gonna cause him a lot of problems. Oh yeah, he's down to forty-seven, and MSS is up to fifty-five. Yeah. This is that's the thing about symmetrical abilities is that they have double the impact. Okay. So uh, that's the middle lane matchup. I don't think we'll see too much kills or action there off the bat, unless we do have an Alchemist roaming in, but he's spotted by an Observer Ward. So no real chance of PPD executing this much. Yeah, bottom lane, we've got the uh, offlane Clockwork who is being zoned out here. He's blocked... Oh, he hasn't actually blocked the pulls. He went for Rocket Flare, but it looks like he mistimed it. Yeah, and that's oh. too bad. He, he landed it every single time against for Sweet Revenge, yeah. but I don't know. Maybe the nerves, maybe just timing in general, but he doesn't get it, and that fear is... Uh, EG is going to be off to a much better start for their supports than Force Boot Revenge were in the quarterfinal. Yep, they can get that double pull, even the triple pull, get this this big camp over here on the left pull through as well. Fogged even dropping a Crystal Nova to kill it off a bit faster, knowing that they need to keep this Creep Wave alive. It's more important to kill fast so your Creep Wave is still a sizable uh, position to actually continue jungling. And Fogged and Fear are both almost level 2, so this is a good yeah. start for EG with their supports. On the plus side, first day free. Universe is not having the easiest time. In fact, he's so not having the easiest time, he may head off to jungle. Okay. Uh, an interesting choice by Tralf to actually go for the Diabolic Edict first rather than the Split Earth, but I think it's actually completely vindicated because as soon as the bear walks up, he personally soloed more, like 60% of its HP. Oh, wow. So Universe couldn't possibly keep using the bear in any respect because yeah. it would just die. And this is the thing about offlane Lone Druid. Uh, it used to be, okay, it dies, I can just resummon it. Now you cannot give this bear away. It's 300 gold. Yeah, to a support hero early on, that is just massive. And uh, forcing Universe to go jungle. He did pull away one creep wave, got his level 2, but he's going to get some okay experience in farm here. And I don't see Stay Free really rotating to kill him, but what they need to do is use this smoke that the Leshrac has to go for a kill, I'd say, on, on MSS mid lane. Yeah, I think that's most likely what they'll go for. Because, again, the Alchemist needs to... to pay off as a support pick, the Alchemist really has to be able to roam early and land those stuns. So smoke is definitely the way to do that. The only issue is if they take the normal smoke route. I oh, know it's okay, only 10 seconds left. Yeah, on the sentry's sentry about to expire. I, yeah. I like that team started adapting and dealing with early smoke ganks with this, this sentry ward place there, but it seems the sentry always expires before the smoke ganks come. Teams aren't smoking <laughs> in the first 2-3 minutes, they're smoking around that 4-5 minute mark. Yeah, you have to not play against the LGD 2 minute uh, <laughs> smoke gank, you have to play yeah. against 4 or 5 minutes. Alright, well, Universe picks up a Quelling Blade as well for his bear, which he didn't start with, just to help jungle a little bit faster. And EG are just looking to play this efficient jungling pants. They've got Lone Druid taking a couple camps, they've got Fear as well as uh, the uh, as well as Naga Siren. Oh, sorry, Crystal Main Fog taking a couple paths. Fog can even use that Frostbite to help him jungle if he wants to. So all in all, EG just farming very efficiently all across the board. I agree. And the same can't be said for Stay Free, because because Zai missed, and this is actually an interesting choice, but because Zai missed the initial Rocket Flare blocks, he now doesn't even feel confident going into that lane. Oh, he thinks wow. he'll get punished too heavily. He so he is jungle too. Yeah. Well, he, at this point, you can't jungle with Cogs, yeah. right? So, as bad of a jungler, I mean, LD is not that bad of a jungler. Uh, <laughs> the, the hero, not the caster. Uh, it's, Lone Druid is not a great jungler, but he's certainly better than Clockwork. Yeah. He's certainly more efficient. Yeah, Clockwork's going to uh, probably have to go back to base after killing this cat. Maybe he'll just decide to suicide as he uses a rocket play to help him out. But yeah, this is... I'm surprised. He, he could have just stayed bottom with cogs and pulled the way back to his tower, like by yeah. using that normal cogs trick. Right. Was it so grim? He could have just tried to do this. They don't have a bat rider to cut through it or anything. At this point, he needs to leave the lane because J.O. Has, like, has enough money for phase boots. Oh, Once yeah. the lifestyle is phase boots, he just straight up solo kills the uh, Clockwork. I agree, but he could have maybe tried to level himself yes. up to at least three or four. I'm surprised. Yeah, he. I think he left the lane a bit too early, which is where I think he just gets a bit scared. Meanwhile, stay free. They did have that early Diabolic Edict, and in fact, he has two points in it right now. So he's probably just going to use this to try to do damage to either the bear or the tower. He doesn't even care which. Yeah, Easy like tower for stay free. Tower. Yeah, stay free. Get themselves a fast Q on tower. Eg not going for any sort of counter pushes yet, at least. They have got uh, two lanes going their way with MSS Outlast hitting Moran at the middle lane. Not as Huge advantage as you'd maybe expect, but Marana just 
playing a decent game so far. He is, and I really like that he leveled the leap first. I think that's given him so much, because yeah. it at least lets him preserve his such incredibly fragile damage. And yeah, I, I think Murana, honestly, you, you can't possibly expect a Murana to do better against Razor than Enzo has done. So he's doing okay. Corey's doing okay, not farming quite as efficiently as J.O. is. There's a little bit more opposition. and My my only concern is just OD against Lifestealer. If both of them free farm early, it's a, like, I just feel like Lifestealer is able to shrug off so much of the damage. Yeah. I'll have to see what Lifestealer looks to do. There's a smoke wraparound coming out from Fear on the bottom lane, maybe looking for Zai on that clockwork, but now Zai is playing very far back. Oh, he's pushing forward. Be so careful. If he decides to go in with an insane, they can get this kill pretty easily. Especially if Lifestealer doesn't get cogged out. Yeah. I, one concern I have for Stay Free is I just feel like PPD has not been active at all in the south of this. Clearly he's taking a different route. He wants to level a bit more. Clockwork. Bit of trouble, but excellent cogs. Yeah. Actually prevents EG from doing much of anything here. Forces TPs as well, and that's uh, the left track support from uh, Trout making his way down. And the T1 tower, EG could have just gone for that, I think, which may have been the better way to play it. Just chip away at the tower, keep the Dyer's clockwork zoned out. It does force just one TP, but at this point, Left Track, it's not really needed this top lane, because stay free to say, hey, let's just pull the wave back, Cora can keep right. on farming, we don't need the Left Track up here to keep on getting any items or farm. It's PPD who's just going to take the jungle pulls for the time yeah. being. I, I think this is a very justifiable decision for stay free. I mean, have the pseudo 212. Actually, Trelf, no. I guess he decides to leave. I, I wouldn't have minded him staying. I feel like it was a more defensible lane position yeah. where Clockwork could actually find some levels, but a bit they decided to send guess, him back. But... Yeah. All right, well, he's going to pick up some more wards as well as his boots, so he can, he's going to need to get some much-needed map control back up for Stay Free. The CM Naga, a good roaming support duo, and that's something which Stay Free need vision of uh, moving right. into the mid-game here. I do think Stay Free are just suffering for the fact that they can't seem to figure out what they want to do in this offlane. And as a result, uh, EG is leveling pretty well. It's level 7 for Razor, a little bit higher than where the Marana's at, which is almost level 7. And level 5 for Universe compared to the level 3 that Zai has found. Well, seven minutes in, neither team really pulling away. Stay free with a tiny little gold edge coming from that T1 tower, but it's EG with about a 1k experience lead. And uh, continuing to jungle away, Universe, uh, like you said, a much faster jungle farmer than anything like the Clockwork can offer. CM can use Frostbite to jungle big creeps. So uh, EG just a bit more efficient in general. And they're actually winning the, the last hit battle as far as carries is concerned. Jo with a 10 yeah. CS advantage over the OD. Yeah, and it's interesting. I think maybe it's Corey not being as familiar with playing OD, possibly, because... Uh, this this player, we've seen him farm extremely well, like with the best of them on heroes like Alchemist and Weaver, so maybe Fox it's just he doesn't play OD all the time. Here comes the Alchemist, I'm gonna land on Fog, there's your TP, and this is a less track. the chain stun may not quite be there, the clockwork can't get close enough. Okay, Fog just gonna throw away his life there, for the greater good. I think he wow, I gotta say, that was that was really nice split earth placement though, even if Fog had run all the way, he would have still gotten hit by the, the split earth. So Trowth with the first blood, that's an important kill for stay free. Because oh, yeah. it also involved Alchemist, who needs to be leveling. And it pushed Alchemist ever so closer to... he. I've seen PPD do this before, actually. I, I really like Medallion, but he really likes Urn. And Urn does give you sustainability on your heroes, so it's a great choice. Well, now smoke rotation towards the middle lane, as uh, we do see them back up the Marana here. They're going to be looking for a kill on MSS. If they can get a stun to start things off here, PPD once again chilling things. He set up the kill on bottom lane. He's going to try to do so in mid lane. Leap in to follow. The Illusion Roots may block this arrow. Now comes the arrow. Nicely played by Stafer. He cancelled an arrow animation, it looks like, to make sure they got that. I think the attempt was... Although, I don't think you can actually do this. It looked like MSS tried to use the illusion to uh, avoid the unstable concoction, but my understanding is you can't actually avoid no. it. No. It's not like a... I mean, it's completely different to Manta style anyways. It doesn't actually, right. like... You don't get that moment of invulnerability. Right, right, right. It would dodge the arrow, though, so... Yeah. I don't necessarily think they needed arrow to get the kill, but it certainly helps. Yeah. The, the main thing there is the ward. It's really the ward that makes that kill possible. Well, yeah. They get the kill in the, uh, the Razor now as well, so stay free up. Two kills to nothing early on. And EG need to find something somewhere on the map. It looks like they're going to go for a tier 1 tower at the bottom lane. J.O. getting it down, down to near to deny range. Not quite deniable just yet, although these range groups will put it there. And EG, they're committing to this tower. The TP's coming in. This is from the left track. J.O. in trouble. He hasn't actually got his ultimate here. He needs to be very careful with this one. Nagas aren't going to send in illusions. Maybe. Oh, nope, not going to get the tower. Jo trying to walk back in. Now he's going to get. Jo just stunned. The stun still does damage, though. Physical damage coming out. Jo almost takes a fall as a result. That was close. That was very close. I think EG living a little closer to the edge. Life yeah. in the fast lane for them there. I, I feel that they almost lost Jo because 
Life Stealer, I mean, he's going to take damage from Composite, damage from the Lishrak. He's going to take damage from the Acid Spray, which does Composite. He could even take damage from the Unstable Concoction, so... He's got to be careful about those decisions. They didn't get the tower for it either, so yeah, they just, don't lose anybody. Uh, but honestly, even having to spend Song for that is not the greatest thing. Now the other team knows you have three minutes in which you don't have this ability. Well, for EG, then back to farming, which I think is suiting them okay. Universe especially looking towards him uh, to act as like... It's it's a tri-call for EG. They've got Lone Druid, Lifestyle, and Razor. So ultimately, they've got a, a, a greater number of carry crews than uh, stay free. Uh, mm -hmm. Unless you're looking towards like a support alchemist offering some kind of carry potential. But... Yeah, I don't know. I, I think Stay Free has the power of the Pentacore gods. I think you're underestimating oh, it. Here comes I guess, CPD again. Yeah, nah, yeah. Leshrac and Alchemist have both. I mean, Al Alchemist, of course, are no one carry, but Leshrac has been used as a carry as well. Time they're going to re re-engage here at the mid lane. EG going to bring down PPD. That was all MSS on his own. The self stun from the Alchemist causing all was, sorts of problems. Uh, it was not just that. Uh, very, very nice dodge of the ensnare completely by the yeah. leap there. So using that momentary capability, but. It was actually that he almost, if he had just landed the arrow on MSS, PPD would have gotten out no problem. It was a creep on 10% HP oh. that ate the sacred arrow. Who spoiled that shot? Hashtag WSTS. <laughs> Alright, well. For EG, they're uh, just going to look to buy their time back off for a little bit. I think they're just confident in their just ability to farm up their tricorps. That they don't feel like they need to push towers, they don't feel they need to take fights, and... They're going for the mech on MSS in the mid lane. He's going to provide that utility for them. Life still a phase drums going to go back for an armor. You can only imagine. And Lone Druid, if he wants to, starts thinking about a radiance for the team. Yeah, I, I think at this point, Universe is with the Midas. He's farming no problem. He, it actually catches up Lone Druid to where you'd expect a stronger, a slightly stronger early jungler to be. And they haven't punished him at all since chasing him out of lane. So even though it's a slower start than typical. I still think Stay Free are a little bit on the back foot in terms of they want to generate opportunities. Yeah, they've Especially made that one here for sure. Crystal Maiden here. It looks like uh -huh. an easy kill on the CM. Fog. Yeah. Well, he walked into that one. Uh, it's, I mean, that Lashrak Alka, I actually like it a lot. I mean, the composite damage of the Lashrak and the composite damage of the Acid Spray plus the armor reduction plus the stun. It's a nice little pairing. I think this is finally Alchemist's turn, too. Meanwhile, Zai in the bottom lane hit, get hit by Ensnare, but they can't chase it any further. Tralf is just scaring them off constantly. This 3 and 0 Lashrak. Yep. Oh, Moonlight Shadow being used. Are they trying to get an engagement off this one? I don't think this is going to work. Also, they've been seen. Uh, yeah. Enzo did that in range of MSS, which I think is a mistake. Even if you're not getting that much out of it, you should always do it out of sight. It may have just been a straight up misclick, it looked like, because they weren't killing MSS in the middle lane. It was maybe the bottom lane they wanted to engage in, but I looks to me maybe like just a bit of a misclick coming out from the yeah, maybe. I mean, it's it's not the highest cooldown ability. It's certainly not short, but I mean, two and a half minutes that they won't have that. I think Song is back up by now as well. Yeah, they have Song. It's so not they gotta really be pretty essential ability necessarily, but they, it may be needed here because that PPD looking to engage here in the middle lane. The Astral set things up. There goes your Acid Spray. The arrow coming in. The Song gets used, and as a result, no Alchemist stun gets thrown. The arrow doesn't actually land either, and EG may just look to turn this one around. Yeah. They're going to look to focus on the OD first. Self Astral comes out from uh, Entangle onto the Miranda. The leap comes afterwards. PPD gets a three, two hero stun. Doesn't actually clip Fog, who's dropping the freezing field, doing a ton of damage. They kill off the Alchemist, as, the, as do they, the OD. And all of a sudden, Stay Free just getting a bit too overzealous in the middle lane. They get punished for their aggression. Yeah. I Even though this was not like EG playing well, especially, it was mostly Stay Free playing poorly. I'm happy because it made me sound smart. Because I was like, ha, ah, some cooldowns back up. That's a big deal. Yeah. And then immediately, <laughs> it ruins. I think Stay Free just miscalculated the cooldown on it. That fight is fine if they don't have Song, but they did, and you lose the fight dramatically. Yeah. Now EG have a mech onto, uh, added to their lamp as well. Fear working on a Vladzi, so EG are going full auras uh, with just getting all the survivability they can for their for their team fight. Yeah, I think this is I think this is great because actually, uh, bonus armor. I I think they should go Quiras quickly on Jo as well because. Alchemist's uh, dangerous damage, like even the unstable concoction, is mostly physical damage. Yeah. So if you just armor up, you block so much of what this team can throw at you. I mean, Murana on a, doesn't do that much physical damage this early anyway. You can reduce that to near zero with enough AoE armor on your team. This is EG being really smart about their item pickups. Yeah, they're going to get the uh, the armlet first on the life so He picks up the helm, but 14 and a half minutes in, Jo can actually start coming to fights. I guess there's no... Obvious target to be infesting. I've seen infest into spirit prayers and all kinds of crazy shenanigans the last couple of days with life stealer, <laughs> but even without like an infest bomb, this hero is still so powerful in early game engagements. 
Yeah, absolutely. And there's there's clockwork, there's Mirana who can leap in and you just jump out of her, why not? And with Moonlight Shadow, anybody can be in a test ball. Looks like State 3, they're still realizing that they need to apply some pressure, be a bit more aggressive. They've got the early mech on the OD, they've got the Lestrak going for a die ball edict build. They want to go for this tier 1 tower, but Lift gets used and EG going to force them back. Probably just waiting a bit longer. They want to try and get this Song of the Siren back into play. Deer has completed his Vlads and 50 seconds away from having that Song up and available. Yeah, this is a very quick Vlads for Fear. I, I think State 3 can probably at least take the tower. Sacred Arrow misses. Uh, Open wounds on Enzo. I think this is just like a go away open wounds yeah. and not a we're going to kill you open wounds. Trying to maybe just force out a leap cooldown or something, but uh, yeah, Enzo. It is only level one. And That's I don't think the buy time for this uh, lone druid who's still farming away. He's got his relic, it looks like, in just 100 gold, and he's got the minus off cooldown, so he'll use that, and well, then we're good to go. Yeah, Universe couldn't even approach the lane. He was forced into jungling from level 2, and yet he's going to have a Radiance at a very appreciable time. Honestly. He's leading the net worth by a pretty solid margin here, I yeah. guess, over his own teammates, and then the ODs with 5.5k. He's got 1,500 ahead of the enemy carry hero as yeah. an off it is. He is the only Midas carrier, so yeah. you have to discount it somewhat, but yeah, that's a good point. Well, uh, I think Midas is one of those items, like, I mean, normally you want to, like, somewhat negate it as far as net worth, but for a hero like Lone Druid, the attack speed really helps you on your bear. That's true. It's a great point. Oh, Meanwhile, he... it looks like a failed smoke gank yep. from Stay Free Universe. Uh, this guy was the in the TI3 prelims. He had the least deaths out of any player in the Ooh. entire. Alchemist stand up. EG know what's going on here. There has been a Moonlight Shadow, so Fog maybe wants to drop this Sentry Ward, but it looks like Stay Free are backed right off. Yeah, pretty pretty respectable use of Moonlight Shadow there. Forces it gets the escape out, but yeah, yeah, you can't really kill Universe. It's really tough. No no team in the world could do it in the TI3 prelims. <laughs> You're not likely to either. EG, uh, looking pretty good here in uh, game no game number one of this best of three against Day 3. 17 minutes in, it's, it's three kills apiece, but imagine the golden experience. Yeah, 3k gold in EG's favor and an even much bigger experience lead. So they're getting, more importantly than anything, just the levels on these heroes of theirs. Yeah, EG at this point, they know that they have the advantage. They know that Stay Free is going to take a really long time at this point to... A lot of these heroes have an extreme late game potential, but there's this big, squishy mid game section where OD is really your only threat. And even OD, he's, I mean, with four staff mechanism, the there's big upsides to this OD build, right? Like, you, you have the early heal, you have the reposition, so you're very, very defensively oriented. But this is a one roll OD. Who's providing the damage if he isn't? And this is the lowest damage item build you can have for him. Yeah. It's. I think they're just going to have to farm Jeyo a lot more to play game. Looks like they are going to buy some time as they get a kill on Jo here with some nice chain stun. That was actually really sick. PPD, a little bit of a misplay from Jo because PPD was here in the trees. He throws out the stun. Jo isn't quick enough with the rage. Okay. And after that, those are great chain stuns. The arrow into the split earth. All right. Well, that's an important kill for uh, State Freak. They're going to march towards this bottom tier 2 tower as well. I think EG can defend this, though, if they really want. Okay, there's no life a buyback, but there's life a back in about 15 seconds. EG somewhat counter pushing at the mid lane, and well, stay free, need to be careful they don't overstay their welcome here at bottom. Yeah, they got to be careful. Now, I mean, people underestimate, or because we haven't seen Lesh in a while, he is able to clear a tower extremely fast, but they decide not to chance the TPs in, especially with the song once again available from Fear. It's a mistake they made once. They don't want to make it again. That would make them look a little foolish. And here is your 18 and a half, or more like a 19 minute radiance for the Lone Druid. It's crazy. That is so that early, is. considering his start. Well, nothing shabby about that at all. And EG are getting the items they need for their, their tricor. The Razor starting to build an ag on his Aghanim Scepter. Life Sealer close to his armlet. I guess this is where, like, normally if it's just your one position safe lane farming Life Sealer, you'd have an armlet by a, maybe. 16, 17 minutes, so he's a bit slower than normal, but when they've got the tricol, it's not really a big priority to put all their protection around the life seal. They've left him on his own a couple of times, and even getting right. caught out there. It's not even just the farm alone for Universe, it's also that because of the relatively early Midas, he's now two levels above anybody on the map too, so how do you really like try to fight this lone Druid at this point if you stay free? He's tankier than anybody you've got. He's going to be sitting in the back while his bear's in the front, so it's not going to be the easiest thing to even find him out. And he can shrug off even something as cataclysmic as a Sanity's Eclipse and probably keep fighting. Yep. Uh, OD's got to really start uh, get, bringing some damage to these team fights. He's yeah. Gone. I, he can't, I feel like he can't go for something like a BKB. It's got to be straight into the Hex at this point. Maybe he a Shiver's can. Guard is okay, but it's something uh, again, with a Mystic Staff. He needs more damage output. I, I totally agree with you guys. I, he's He is their damage, so he can't. 
he's going like the mid OD build where you have a carry who's attacking for you. Yeah. Whereas Mushi, Mushi would scoff at this build. He would <laughs> he would just go straight for uh, first item Mystic Staff into holding 10k gold. He still might get the four staff. Mushi still likes the four staff. I could go he force like hex four staff. or something. Yeah. That's absolutely true. He'd go force hex. Yeah. So I'm, I'm being sl I'm exaggerating yeah. slightly, but he would go for damage. The four staff gives you more damage in the sense that when you can actually chase people down rather than have them kite you around. Yeah, absolutely. It's it does in some ways give you more damage than like Look a Mystic Staff would, but... We do see EG confidence. take a T1 top tower now. Cor oh, sorry, uh, PPD TPing in. Oh, Entangled God. up and... Uh-oh. He's gone. No yeah. chance. Radiance the Entangle there. Uh, even even without the first hit Entangle, he probably still dies here as long as you get a second, third, fourth hit Entangle, which I imagine Universe would have had the time to get another right click off. Oh, yeah. And here you see the... When you just roll a hard one on the Alchemist, right? Like, you, you pick the support Alchemist with the hope that he's going to just consistently bring those kills for you. He does have assists on all four of their kills, but yep. it's not enough. It's not enough Brown Boots, Urn of Shadows. They're getting one kill every five minutes. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I didn't think about that, but that's a, that's a great way to look at it. They just aren't getting enough here. Jay's gonna, well, cop an arrow, but he's raged up, so he takes no damage, doesn't get stunned, and... Well, EG get themselves a tier 2 tower as well. Now, they bring down the Spirit Bear. The tower actually gets denied by the Mirana, so nice bit of play by Stay Free, but they are still fighting a losing battle here. EG going to go in. The Song is there. They're stealing all of the OD's damage. This oh, Razor is going to have so much right-click potential. Plus 230, plus 260. He is going to be a right-click machine. Immediately banished. They had to get rid of him in the fight. Fog go up to a freezing field. Nice 2 hero Sun coming out from the left track. Trout maybe trying to turn this one around, but MSS is just hitting too hard. Look at him just tear apart these dire heroes. He's lost his plus damage shortly, but... He's still got for a bit longer here. It's a two for one trade so far. Life's oh, still very low. And Alchemist. Oh, he stunned himself, it looks like. The Radiance burn damage is there. The Plasma Field as well. Down goes the Alchemist. And EG aren't done yet. It looks like they're going to get Enzo as well. There's no leap. It's on cooldown. EG get themselves a fourth kill. And they're going to get the team wide. Lone yeah. Druid. Universe gets it's the kill on the Mirana. And I'm oh, sorry, the Lash Rack. And now the Tier 3 Tower. Rax is going to go yeah. down. GG comes out from State Free. 22 I'm minutes into the game. They, they couldn't do anything at this point. Universe is unanswerable just by himself, and that fight just showed EG's superior team fighting capacity with this team lineup as well. If your Alchemist doesn't land every single one of the stuns and stuns himself, that's one hero that is completely useless. Your Moran is throwing out arrows that just get eaten by life stealers, so she's useless. Your OD is doing zero auto attack damage, I mean, except for his orb. But again, he didn't go the high orb damage yeah. build. Meanwhile, Razor is hitting you for almost as much as... Uh, you know, your Elder Titans of the world, so... <laughs> they got punished for the first pick OD. They immediately they got... All, so many of these heroes just can't... Like, yeah. you, you, firstly, you've got your Lone Druid and Razor, both heroes who beat OD in a 1v1 matchup, and then yeah. heroes like Naga Siren to combine with the Razor to steal damage. Lifesteal does great against OD because he's got the magic immunity, and... Right. Well, Crystal Maiden, the only hero who doesn't, like, straight up counter an OD or do that well against OD, but they still had so many answers. I think they tried to make this draft work, and more power to them for it, but... They probably should have picked the OD fourth if they wanted it, and not first. Yeah, I, I definitely agree there. I'm surprised they went straight into it. And with that, EG get themselves a one-game advantage. This is a best of three, so myself as well as Vikramon will be back shortly with Game 2. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, Game 2 will be live.